All right. discussion. But so, uh, this is the eighth month, if you can believe it, of the Justice Dialogue. So, October was just a couple of sessions, so that is kind of a mini month. That's why it seems longer. But November, December, January, February, March, April, and yes, this is May. So we're starting our eighth month. The classic. We should be proud of that. That's, uh, that's something good. That's kind of an achievement. Um, so we've, uh, we started off having a lot of professors from Canisius uh, coming down and giving talks. And that was, I think, important to get us going. And then we had more activists being the ones to give the talks when we hit about January or so, and, and, and December. And now we've went down to just one a week, and here we have um, a doctoral candidate. Um, he's already working as a professor, but uh, he's a few steps from his doctorate. This is Robert Earl. Um, he's a student over at UB. He teaches at SUNY Judicio and we'll be starting this fall teaching at um, SUNY Cortland and uh, we're happy to have him here addressing issues of capitalism and environmentalism. Take it from here. Okay. Thanks for having me. Uh, very humbled to be here because um, I hold Occupy in, in very, very, very great esteem. Uh, I think it is the definition of authenticity in terms of organization people coming together uh, because they know something is not right across the globe but locally uh, to, to fight for justice. And so I think the justice dialogues are a great uh, part of that. And uh, the, only, the only other thing I want to say in preface is that uh, in general, even when I teach, I don't uh, really like standing up and, and uh, lecturing people. Um, so what I'm going to do today is the same kind of thing based on the learning centered approach. I'm going to introduce a few um, points that uh, I'm interested in that maybe we can talk about um, and sort of explain why um, I think the issue is, is worth discussing, it's, itself is worth discussing. And then uh, from there, uh, I hope that uh, you can inform me uh, better about uh, the interrelation between our current economic system, uh, capitalism, and uh, more, more specifically global capitalism. Uh, and uh, environmental crises, or the environmental crisis. I do have some prepared notes, um, and I also should part, start by saying that uh, today, May 5th, is uh, um, a national day of action uh, through, uh, organized in part by 350.org, which Bill McKibben runs, uh, for uh, recognition of the problems of uh, global climate change that we face, um, and acting, uh, and, and the, uh, the, the sort of title of this day is Connecting the Dots, and I think that it's very appropriate to talk about this topic today uh, in terms of connecting the dots, because uh, what I'm hoping to do is try to, uh, or in this group, uh, connect some dots between uh, the roots of the, uh, of the global climate change uh, issues that we face and other environmental issues as well that I also think are connected or need to be recognized as connected. Um, so, Economist Kenneth Bolden uh, once said that the only people that believe in, in infinite growth on a finite planet are idiot, or uh, I'm sorry, the only people that believe in infinite growth on a finite planet are mad men or economists. Um, but we live in a world where growth means everything, uh, where if we don't have 3% growth, 3% uh, GDP, uh, increase in the GDP, uh, then this generally means recession and we know that over the last half decade especially. So the question could be whether we, all of us, all seven billion people that now live on the earth, uh, are either madmen or economists. Uh, do we all believe uh, in economic growth? Uh, well, I mean, I assume in talking to this group um, that uh, we all recognize the disasters that global capitalism uh, poses. Uh, indeed, the occupation movement um, Rising as a response to uh, the government's prioritization of, of Wall Street profits over uh, the uh, needs of the American people uh, um, is is a perfect example of people realizing that uh, that economics isn't everything, that that uh, that growth isn't everything. So it leaves open the possibility, at least, that we're not all mad or not all economists. Uh, 
Um, so under this assumption of a shared understanding of the economic disasters of global capitalism, I want to consider uh, capitalism's effects on natural resources and long-term eco-social environments. Um, and I'm going to focus on three issues that I'm going to talk about in that order. And then I'm going to link those, correlate those with uh, three criticisms of capitalism. I'm actually using each of these issues as, uh, a, as an example of uh, the criticisms of capitalism that are related to them. So the issues are intellectual property rights uh, related to food technology. Uh, the second one is global climate change. And the third one is uh, dwindling natural resources, in particular water and fossil fuels. And those correlate uh, with three criticisms of, of capitalism, uh, which, in, which first the first one is uh, a focus on short-term profits. Um, secondly, the presence of unprecedented market externalities. And then finally, the third one uh, is so-called internal or technological growth, uh, or technological market expansion, or internal growth. Um, so before, and I, that will become clear as I go through the issues and then I correlate each of those with those issues, which is the bulk of what I'll be doing here. But I want to have, I want to start with two caveats. First of all, that those are not obviously the only environmental issues, uh, or maybe not even necessarily the most important. Uh, they're all over the place and they are indistinguishable with social issues and everything else. Um, that, you know, that doesn't really even, need, even need to be said anymore, but um, with the burgeoning of the environmental movement, 70s and, and forward, um, there seemed to be an antagonism between uh, environmental uh, issues and uh, social issues. Uh, with the environmental justice movement in the 90s and, and, the, and for a plethora of reasons, uh, it's, it's not as difficult to see the connections between those anymore, but that caveat should be drawn that these aren't the only issues. Secondly, these issues are obviously also interrelated. I think that um, they are linked to the, I think that the environmental issues that I'm talking about and others are linked to the historic rise of capitalism over the last several centuries, um, but in more particular uh, to the rise of uh, global capitalism following World War II. Um, but uh, I also want to point out that um, environmentalists also um, uh, usually recognize that there's a, a single, a single Unifying feature of these of these issues, um, or or that um, they're they're interrelated, or they're they're really one major issue. Um, so uh, so, for instance, they don't say uh, it's not usually said environmental crises, but envir the environmental crisis, which sort of gets at the environmental crisis. Like there's there's actually one problem, or there's a common root. And whether that is economics itself, or, or whether that, that uh, link is conceived to be population rise itself, or industrial societies themselves, Western religion itself, human nature itself, Pandora's box, uh, human uh, curiosity, God himself, uh, there's a recognition that there's, there's something that happened, say, since 1800 or so that have brought about a series of crises or uh, an environmental crisis that needs to be met. So those are my two caveats. Um, oh, but just to motivate uh, what I'm trying to say a little bit, um, uh, I'm, I'm working in the background of uh, a work by John Bellamy Foster and Fred Magdoff called What Every Environmentalist uh, Needs to Know About Capitalism. Um, and actually that sort of is what inspired my title as well and uh, that work is mostly inspired to try to uh, get environmentalists to recognize that these are actually economic issues because a lot of times they'll avoid these issues and I think that it's less out of ignorance than out of uh, bashfulness you could say cowardness uh, or cowardice um, or just uh, pragmatic scheming of if we say that growth is the problem, maybe we can get away with it, but if we say that capitalism is the problem, then we're not going to convince people or we're not going to uh, uh, be successful. Uh, maybe we can get middle of, middle of the ground changes by uh, working in the system and not um, pointing to the uh, elephant in the room. 